So I do read the comments from time to time. I mean, actually, I read a lot of the comments. And I've seen a lot of people asking me to do phones other than Samsung and Apple. And one of the main reasons I don't do that is because, of course, most people watch videos about Samsung and Apple. I'm just being honest. Um, but I did see something come across my screen the other day when I was watching YouTube that reminded me of a comment that I've seen a lot of times before to check out some other phones from a company called Xiaomi, or in this case, Redmi. The Redmi Note 9S. Now, I picked this up mainly because of the price and the promise of some of the performance you can get from this thing. And I will tell you, I was pretty impressed. Uh, is it worth $200? Uh, heck yes. Should you buy it? Maybe. I'll tell you why, right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listening to, to Travis. What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. Now, for a lot of people outside of the United States, they already know about Xiaomi, and they know about Redmi, and they know about a bunch of phones that most people in America don't. And I know that a lot of people, when they watch this video, will either already have this phone, or have heard of the phone, or whatever, and most people in America would have not. That's why I kind of want to show people in America what we're kind of missing out on, because we do have access to some $200 phones, but for the most part, they're either garbage or they're used. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with used phones. I mean, as a matter of fact, I've done an entire series about it, the Amazon Renewed series. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link in the description below. You don't want to miss that. That's a great opportunity to get some, I don't know, flagship phones from only a year ago for a substantially less expensive price. But none of them are $200. I'm just going to say right now, none of them are $200. And this thing, the Note 9S, is a savage. I'll leave some of the specs to the other reviews on YouTube, and I'll talk a little bit about them. But when I see this thing, you see the color on this thing, the shimmery shimmery, good goopily goo, man. I look at this thing, this is probably the best looking phone on the back that I've ever seen. I'm a sucker for blue and green, and this thing takes both of them, smashes them together, and has a baby. Man, this thing looks incredible in my hand. I love it. And it's Gorilla Glass, so you know that it's going to be good even if you drop it, which you better not do. But even if you do, it does come with a case. And for $200, I love that. Why is it the less expensive phones come with cases and the more expensive ones, especially from Samsung, tend to not come with cases? And one of the features that I used to have on old phones, which I love, this thing has, is the IR Blaster. You can control any device that has IR with your phone. Most people in America aren't used to this. The phones in America haven't had IR blasters in years. And, and even when it did, a lot of people don't remember that they did. So literally, if you're in like a bar or something and the TV's really loud, you can, you can turn it off. So this is my first experience with a Redmi phone. Now, if you don't know who Redmi is, it's probably because you're in America. See, they're growing incredibly fast over in India and other places. And uh, they're very well known for their quality of uh, phone. Now, some people have a problem with Redmi slash Xiaomi because of some of the things they've done. And I, I won't go too deep into it, but I will let you know that there are some things privacy-wise you might want to be aware of. They do have like some weird, I guess depending on where you purchase this, uh, ads in the settings sometimes that pop up. Now, that hasn't happened to me, but I've read about it, so I know it exists. So I guess maybe they're subsidizing the price of this thing through ads. And while it hasn't happened to me, it doesn't mean it won't happen to you, especially if you buy this outside of the States. But again, if you're buying this in the States using my link, I, I haven't had that problem. So let's talk about the experience. First of all, the operating system is based on Android 10. That's right, the newest operating system for $200. There are still some way expensive phones out there that do not have Android 10. What's going on? When I see phones like this with really great features and really good performance for $200, and then we see other companies out there charging hundreds and hundreds of dollars with a non-perfect experience, I get a little bit upset, and I think you should as well. Because without even talking more about this from a usability standpoint, if someone was looking for a smartphone that I knew and didn't have a lot of money, I would probably tell them to buy this. I have the four gigs of RAM, 64 gig model. There is a six gigs of RAM, 128 gig model for only a little bit more. Actually, I guess if you're out buying these and there's like a $30 difference, you might as well go for the other one. But I mean, for 200 bucks, it was hard to pass up. I really like this thing. It's using the Snapdragon 720G, which a lot of you have not heard of, but it's a really powerful processor. Now, the way I even came across this was a video by a guy named ETA Prime as he was doing some uh, emulation using this phone, basically playing games like old Wii games and stuff on this. And a lot of times you will find that lower end phones with lower end processors can't play those games very well. But this one did. 
So the processor is legit. And I've had no problems using this or having any stutter or anything like that. It's just been real smooth, real fast, and I've enjoyed the experience. One other thing I've enjoyed is the first time I've ever had a phone with a fingerprint sensor was on the side. Now that's because this is an LCD screen, a 1080p plus LCD screen. And of course you're not gonna have a in-display fingerprint sensor in 2020 on an LCD screen, at least not generally speaking. So on the side, man, it is super, super fast. I love it, it's super accurate, and you're already pressing the power button to turn the thing on. So it's kind of fast and it's reliable. And of course the uh, face scan, which of course is nowhere near as secure as a 3D face scan, it uses 2D and can be fooled easily, but I've talked about that before, is super fast as well. There's nothing really slow about this phone at all. If you're looking for something to even game on, this thing will get you through. And it's got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery with 18 watt fast charge. This thing's gonna last you all day. With a lower resolution screen and using LCD and not, not really, even if you pushed it hard, you're getting through the day. Like you'd have to be a complete savage to run through this battery in one day. And it's got four cameras. So let's talk a little bit about those cameras because for some of you, this might be the one part where you either go all the way in or come all the way out. It's got a 48 megapixel, a eight megapixel, a five megapixel, and a two megapixel camera. That's four different cameras. That's normal, wide, macro, and of course, depth sensing. Of course, don't forget about the front facing camera as well. And while most of those numbers sound familiar across other phones, the quality is interesting. So on occasion, you can get some pretty decent pictures out of this thing. There's even like a low light video mode, which works really well on this thing. I was actually really surprised by that. But there are some issues with the pictures that I'm not totally like overwhelmed by. Look, for $200, I'm willing to cut it a break. Is it good enough for $200? Yes. I think that most people that are gonna spend $200 on a phone are gonna be happy with the images. But I think those of you that are a little bit more picky are just probably gonna be like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not gonna trust a picture to this thing. But there's a solution. The cool thing about Android is you always have a solution to your problems. And the number one solution to this is the Gcam app. Now, I've loaded the Gcam on and I'm gonna show you two pictures. One taken with the stock camera, stock app, and then now with Gcam. If you don't know what Gcam is, let me real quick explain. Gcam is basically the APK that's ripped from Pixel phones so you can get all that digital magic that they do on pictures. Now, a lot of people might think that Pixel phones take great pictures because of the lens. It really doesn't have that much to do with the lens. It's that computational goodness and you have access to it. Listen, you can Google Gcam APK and you'll find it. It'll tell you how to do it. There's just a couple of steps you have to do. And then once you put that on here, this now raises this up to another level of phone. Once you take care of the actual camera, it's pretty hard to deny this is an excellent phone. Now, while it does shoot up to 4K 30 frames per second, it doesn't stabilize that footage, so you're either gonna need to have a very steady hand or get a gimbal. If you shoot in 1080p, you can get stabilization. So that is one thing. It just doesn't support it in 4K. If you like to shoot in 4K, you're probably not buying a $200 phone to begin with. Now, I already know there's gonna be some people in the comments talking about how it's a Chinese company and you need to watch your security. Here's the thing, and I've made a video about this a long time ago. As soon as you put your name anywhere on the internet, you have no privacy. You should have no expectation of privacy, period, end of story. However, I don't think that Xiaomi is gonna do anything untoward with your information. They do have Google Apps still on it. You can absolutely download any Google app as the Google Play Store is on here. It does work with GSM networks here in America. That means T-Mobile and AT&T, and of course, things like Pet Metro PCS and that sort of uh, that sort of thing. I've had no problems with that. It doesn't have every single um, band that you might need, especially with T-Mobile having some of the extended bands, but it worked with me on, on my T-Mobile. So having said that, if you're worried about your privacy, then I guess skip this. But to be perfectly honest, if you're on Facebook, your privacy's out there anyway. And those people that are worried about that aren't gonna buy this phone anyway. So am I making an excuse for them? No, I mean, I bought this with my own money. I don't have any contacts over at Redmi. I don't have any reason to say anything other than this. I've enjoyed using this phone. There's nothing that I can say that is bad about this phone. And there's one extra thing that I can tell you that I think is super cool about this phone. It's uh, thought protection. For those people who watch my boy Flossie Cotter, you know what thought protection is. For those who don't, I'm just gonna show you something. Here's me using my regular thumbprint to open up the phone. And then this is me using my thought print. And you can see that there's a difference. It's two basically different phones in, in one phone. I mean, I'll let your imagination figure out the rest. So the battery life is amazing. The cameras are fine, which can be improved with Gcam. Um, the operating system is one thing that I have a little bit of a problem with, and maybe this won't bother you at all. 
I like having an actual app drawer, which this doesn't really have. When you swipe up from the bottom, it gives you Google search, which is cool, I guess, but I like to have my apps away. Now it's easy to fix. You just install a new launcher, but for people who are paying $200 for a phone, they might not know how to do that. I wish they had had another way to have an app drawer. Again, maybe overseas, this is the norm, but here in America, we, we like app drawers. So to be clear, this gets my recommendation because it's $200. Everything about this screams more than $200. Link is in the description below, and I would absolutely buy this again. The color is phenomenal. The camera works great. The performance is there. There's some really cool features on this phone that I haven't even talked about. I'll let you check those out on other videos, but Man, I actually like this phone a lot. It's the best $200 phone I've ever used. What about you? What's the best $200 phone you've ever used? Tell me about it in the comments. I wanna know, should I buy a different one? I would love to check it out. By the way, that Amazon Renew thing, you need to watch these videos right here. I'll see you next time. Peace and love.